Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. We've got something cool here from HSF Tools. So this is a thermal imaging camera. Now this is sort of a handheld camera. They have a couple different versions which we'll look at a little bit later. Uh, there are some of the specs on the box at least and nothing on that side and not really a whole lot on the back. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box and take a closer look. And let's see what it looks like. So it looks like we've got yeah, user manual. I'll go through that in a moment here. Here is a calibration certificate, which is important and nice to have. Looks like it was calibrated 7 of 24, so not too long ago. And what else? Nothing else in there. Oh, little card. Thank you for your purchase. Okay, cool. And then the unit. Looks like there's a special cable and a carrying strap. Get all that back together. So that looks like your uh, looks like a charging cable. And again, a strap for the case here. Oh, it has a little metal clip here, so you can carry it on your belt, which is nice. And it has a nice little canvas carrying case. And there is the unit. So let's see. There's the charging port. And there's the, uh, this is where you'd screw in like a tripod. It's usually a quarter 20 thread there. Here's where you attach your little carrying strap. Actually, I said that was for the case. It's actually for the camera itself. The little carrying strap. We've got an on off button here. Here's a protective cover for the, uh, I think, protective cover for the screen. We'll leave that on for the moment. Here's the power button. I'm curious to see how much charge is on the battery if it shows here. Sometimes these come fully charged, sometimes they are partially charged. Okay, so we have to put in the date and time. So today is, let's see, 10-27-2021. Time. Let's see. Let's just do a 12-hour. And right now it is 7:35 p.m. And I guess that's it. Okay. All right. So it's already up and running. And I will go ahead and take the protective cover off. There's still a little bit of uh, glare there from the overhead light, so I'll try to hold it to where we don't get too much reflection. But anyway, there's what the screen looks like. And it almost looks like this is a piece that pulls out, but it doesn't. It's just there for, just there for decoration, I believe. So really the next thing to do is to go through the manual so that I understand what all of the fun functions and features are uh, before I get too much further uh, along. Okay, looking through the manual, it does do a pretty good job of describing the features and functions. And here on the front of the camera, this is actually the flashlight. This is your thermal imaging sensor, and then this is actually a camera, so you can take pictures uh, with this. So it doubles as a, a thermal camera, uh, also as a regular camera, although that's not the intended purpose it just has a camera on there so if you need to take a picture of whatever you're looking at you can do that and you're not limited or restricted to only thermal imaging okay so according to the manual here it looks like the little house button up here is to return to live view this is the album button so you hit that and then you can look at everything that you've recorded 
so that's nice you can scroll through there let's go back to the main uh, screen then there's enter settings so you hit the little gear change measurement settings display settings capture settings so there's quite a range of things you can adjust capture settings and device settings so that is the setting button okay turn on off measurement tools oh there we go okay so we got different ways for measurement next one down is switch image mode this is nice so you can okay so you've got quite a few different features there that's nice you can go back Looks like there's several here to choose from. There's the visual, so that's actually using using the camera. Uh, let's see. So now we can go back to let's go back to our regular mode. Next one down is let's see, switch color palettes. So we can change the color scheme that we use, which is nice. I like that. Looks like there are quite a few to choose from. That almost looks like an x-ray image there. All right, and then the last one is set level and span down here. So that must be the range of temperatures. Okay, so the set level and span set the temperature range and the palette only works for targets within the temperature range. Okay, so that's nice. And, and really the rest of the manual, like I said, does a pretty good job of explaining uh, what's going on. So it's good to keep this handy until you become familiar with all of the functions. Okay, now I will go through some usage scenarios. Uh, this is a cool uh, thing to have, and yeah, it's kind of like a toy at first. You can go around and check temperatures, but it actually has many practical applications, uh, and I'll be showing some of those here. Uh, and usually what you're looking for with this type of a camera, you're looking for an abnormally hot area, like for example, on an electrical box. Uh, the hot area would indicate a high load or a loose connection, and it can give you some insight into a problem before it happens. And here's the engine of my vehicle. I just finished driving it. You can see some of the hot spots there. And of course you can see places that are much cooler relative to the rest of the engine. So there's the reservoir tank over here. You can see it's pretty warm. There are parts of the engine block itself that are pretty warm. Now the blue areas here, these cooler areas are the plastic intake manifold, so it is considerably cooler than the rest of the engine. Some of the exhaust components, well that's a coolant line there. And here is the front wheel and you can see the heat coming from the brakes. Behind the metal wheel there you can see all of the braking components and here's my electrical panel you can see there's not much going on except for the one circuit right there and that is what is feeding all of the power to the lights in the building but everything else looks cool and quiet and this is an electrical box here you can see what it looks like and then when we look at the thermal imaging you can get an idea where the hot spot is uh, there should be a little transformer inside of here so that's where the heat is coming from and I use the built-in camera to get a picture of my test system, which we'll look at here with the thermal camera next. So here is the motherboard. We can see some of the warmer areas. You can see the VRM is a little bit warm. There's the coolant pump right in the middle. And when we look at the radiator, you can definitely see which side is hot. So the heat is coming in on the left. It's about 83. 82, 83 degrees, and as we travel down, the 
coolant starts to lose temperature and then it makes a U-turn at the bottom of the radiator and starts to go up, continuing to lose a little bit of temperature. And by the time we get to the top, it's considerably cooler, approximately 10 degrees from uh, where it went in. And then it goes back to the pump. Right now we'll look at the graphics card. It is under a stress test, so you can see it's a little warm there. That's the back of where the processor is, so close to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. There's the heat sink on top. You can see it is also a bit warm. Let's come around to the other side here. Some more of the heat sink. And yeah, there's where the power cord plugs in. That's a little warm also. Now here's the front where the fans are. So you can see the fans themselves are a bit cooler, but you can see the heat of the heat sinks coming through, coming through the fans. So here's a little bit of video from the thermal camera that is captured. You can see the rest of it's reasonably cool, as well as the rest of the motherboard. Except for right there, the hot spot again is right there on the controller. Completely normal. Okay, I'm in a room that is pretty much dark, but as you can see, I'm looking at some wall outlets, and you can see there's a smart switch right there. If we go up the wall a little bit more, you can see there's another group of outlets up there. You can see a little adapter for a camera. Over here is power supply that is hanging down, and if we look up above, there's an Ethernet switch. And then there's a security camera right there. Now I'm looking at the back of the house and we can see it's not real cold out, but you can see where the foundation of the house is. So the orange down there is the concrete block that's right above ground level. There's a little power transformer there on the wall. But you can definitely see where the foundation is compared to the rest of the house. So there's the siding, there's not much to see there. If we look at a window, you can see a little bit of reflection, but you can see where the heat is being transferred. This is really good when it's really cold out. You can come out and look at your windows and you can see if there's anywhere that you're losing heat. This one doesn't look too bad. But again, it's not real cold out. The colder it is outside, the easier it is to detect uh, any heat loss. But you can really see the foundation. It lights right up. Okay, so I've looked at things that are warm, but let's look in the freezer at some things that are cold. And here you can see we're definitely in the cold zone. Of course, you can see the big contrast between when the freezer is open and the surrounding area. If you look at the ice cubes, as you would expect, they are cold. But the exterior surfaces, of course you can see my reflection there in the stainless steel surface of the exterior of the refrigerator. And there's the wall next to the refrigerator. You can actually see some warm spots on the wall. On the other side of the wall is my water heater. You can see some of the pipes going through the wall there. You can see exactly where the furnace is too over in that corner. Now something that's really interesting, uh, I'm out in my studio which is a separate building from the house and I built this oh, not quite 30 years ago and as I'm looking at the walls you can actually see where the studs are. I can see the, uh, the trusses there for the roof too with the color differential and it's more obvious when there's a bigger temperature differential too when it's either really hot out or really cold out. But one thing that's important is you can go around and see if you're missing any insulation anywhere. So I can see right there, there's an area that is a little bit cooler. So that tells me it's missing some insulation. And when I built this building, I used the rolls of fiberglass insulation. You can see right there it has shifted, or I didn't get the roll to go all the way to the end. So I need to get up there and actually move my insulation around. But you can look at your walls, and you can see if there are any areas. Like up here, you can see I've got some air leakage possibly there in the corners. I can look at the back wall and I see a whole section right there. You can see it's sort of pink. Uh, that looks like I either missed the insulation behind there or it shifted down somehow 
but uh, I'll have to investigate a little bit now that I now that I'm looking into this a little more. Now you may have noticed during some of the uh, little video clips you would hear a clicking sound and then the image would freeze momentarily or pause uh, and then it sort of skips or picks back up and that is completely normal. I looked into it, I actually contacted the manufacturer to verify it, but uh, my older FLIR 1 camera here, this one does the same thing and this is several years old uh, and this camera has a similar behavior. So the manufacturer's response was uh, that your imager will periodically calibrate to optimize image quality and measurement accuracy. In this process, the image will pause briefly and you will hear a click as the shutter moves in front of the detector. Uh, the self-calibration will be more frequent during startup or in extreme cold or hot environments. This is normal operation to ensure optimum performance. So, that makes sense and uh, perfectly normal. And if you need to connect the camera to a tripod, you can use the quarter 20 tapped hole in the bottom of the camera. This here is the quarter 20 screw that is pretty standard on tripods to mount cameras. And that's what it looks like. And now we can check out the HSF Tools website. Uh, there's a home products here. You can see all the different products. They have different types of thermal imaging cameras. So what we're looking at right now is the HP 96, but they have quite a few other handheld units. This one here plugs into your, uh, plugs into your, I think these are for Android phones. Let's see I don't know if they make them for Android and iOS, uh, Android phones. Okay. So it looks like it's, yeah, not for iPhone. So that answers that question. If we go back to the products, I think that covers everything they have. Yes. Uh, the download center. If we go there now, do not just click on these icons. If you click on the icon, all it does is give you a really big icon. You want to click on the text down here. So for example, firmware, you can look at all the firmware that's available. This is the HP 96. They're on 5.5.72. And when I look at my camera, let's see, I think I'm on a device settings about yeah it looks like I'm on 5.5.61 so there is at least one rev higher than this one so I will try to update that here in a moment but first let's go back oh another thing I didn't show earlier if you pan down or you scroll down like that I should say uh, you get a button for a flashlight that you can turn on and off and then there's a light and a dark mode and you can adjust the screen brightness here if you want. I forgot to uh, forgot to show that earlier. Okay, so I'm going to look into what it takes to update the firmware. Usually you update the zip, but I don't see anything on the camera that initiates it. So I'll have to experiment a little bit here. Okay, so it looks like it says uh, after I download it and unzip it, there's a manual here that walks me through the process of updating the firmware. So I unzipped it, open the detected disk on your PC, unzip the firmware, copy it to the root directory of the disk, disconnect the device from the PC and reboot the device to start upgrading. Okay, so I will give that a shot. So this looks like it is the uh, BIOS or not BIOS but firmware file so we'll copy that to the root directory this is showing up as the E drive this is the root directory so I guess we paste it here give that a moment it says to turn off the auto power off function uh, I assume close means that it's disabled because the maximum is 60 minutes. So we'll leave it at that. And after it is copied over, it says to reboot the device, unplug it and reboot it. So we will unplug it. There we go. And restart it. So my guess is we will get some kind of a message saying that it is 
updating or upgrading the firmware. If I put the file in the right directory. Ah, there we go. Yep. Firmware upgrading. All right. So we'll be back in a moment. Okay, it did a reboot and it did take a few minutes for the firmware to upgrade, but it looks like everything is back to normal. So the little manual here that uh, comes with the firmware download looks like it is spot on as far as uh, the instructions working properly. Okay, so it says the optimization. So this sort of tells you what they did in this particular firmware update. So we've got a default temperature range is set to auto switch and uh, color distribution, set the color distribution in local settings, capture settings, color distribution, and then the screen brightness. Okay, so it looks like some fairly minor changes there. Oh, and they've even got some troubleshooting here, so this is nice. Okay, and I'm back on the main screen. Let's go back to the download center. And one thing I didn't look at, let's see, let's look at specifications. So this has, okay, data sheets for each camera. Let's go ahead and look at the HP 96, do a download. And then also the other thing I wanted to look at on here is the user manual. So you can download the user manual, which I have the hard copy, but if you want the PDF version of the manual, you can download it here. So it looks like they have a nice little website that should give you everything you need if you have any issues. And here's the spec sheet that I downloaded. So it has all of the specifications for the model here, the HP 96. So let's see, 25 hertz frame rate. Got the thermal resolution. Uh, let's see, is there anything else in here? Four gigabytes of memory built in. And I did not see any way to upgrade that. So you get four gig and that is it. Uh, 0.3 megapixel visual camera. So pretty low resolution, but this is not really meant to be a regular visual camera. It's meant to be a thermal camera, of course. So there's the resolution on the infrared. Super resolution is a bit higher. Spectral range 7.5 microns up to 14 microns. Uh, let's see, there's some information in here that is useful if you're on the technical side. Video format is uh, MP4. Rechargeable battery. Okay, so you've got approximately four hours of battery life. It takes two hours to fully charge it. IP54 just means the device can be attached to machines without any further protection. Uh, let's see, I'm used to IP, some of the other IP ratings for washdown and uh, water ingress, but uh, I would advise keeping this out of the weather and keeping it out of the water. Let's see. Okay. All right. Well, we can move on. Okay. So if we're looking at pricing on Amazon right now, it is $189. The list price is $259. So that's a pretty good drop in price. It says the sale ends in two hours and 33 minutes. But, uh, you know, on Amazon, this stuff is going on sale all the time, especially around the holidays, Black Friday, uh, things like that. Now, if you look at the 189 for what you get and you look at other thermal cameras, they're in the same 200 to 300, $400 price range. Uh, so this one comes in at the lower end, but from what I've seen with the feature set and functionality, I would say this is a pretty good value. So I would give this the Overclockers Club Gold Award. This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.